Hello and welcome to this Spotlight episode on Manchester. A quick look at little known aspects of the early railways. During the 19th and the first half of the 20th century, the city of Manchester had an enviable reputation for heavy engineering and, in particular, for locomotive building. Firms such as Naismith Wilson, Sharp Stewart and Bayer Peacock all called the city home. Indeed, companies like Bayer Peacock turned out over 5,000 locomotives in their lifetime. But how and where did it all begin? The first locomotive to be built in Manchester wasn't built by any of these world-famous firms. Instead, it was built by a firm of millwrights and engineers with premises on Great Bridgewater Street, nowadays somewhere underneath the Bridgewater Hall. The aptly named Caledonian Foundry of Galloway, Bowman and Glasgow. Many engineering firms in Manchester had been founded by Scots and Galloway, Bowman and Glasgow was no exception, being founded by William Galloway and James Bowman. Other famous Scottish engineers who moved to Manchester included Sir William Fairbairn, William McConnell and James Kennedy. Richard Roberts of Sharp Roberts and Company was of course a Welshman and Charles Bayer, alias Karl Friedrich Bayer, was a German, having arrived in Manchester as a penniless immigrant from Saxony with hardly any English. In September 1830, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway had opened with a fleet of locomotives by Robert Stevenson and Company of Newcastle. In May 1831, the Board of Directors announced that they would be interested in receiving tenders from other engineering firms for the supply of locomotives, and Galloway, Bowman and Glasgow duly responded. Their locomotive, the aptly named Manchester, was delivered and under test by the summer of 1831. She was a curious machine and certainly a break from the Stevenson tradition. She had a multi-tubular boiler, but the chimney was apparently placed near the firebox end, with the hot gases being ducted alongside the boiler, and on the way preheating the boiler feed water before exiting up the chimney. Even more curiously, she used vertical cylinders placed at the front end of the locomotive where the driver stood, the fireman being stood at the opposite end. The use of vertical cylinders was because of James Watt's dire warning that the weight of a piston in a horizontal cylinder would rapidly wear it oval, and this myth, although partially true of course, took long to die. Manchester had wooden wheels 5 feet 6 inches in diameter, and they had been made by John Ashbury, the founder of the famous Ashbury Wagon and Carriage Works of Manchester. But in having wheels so large, she was in contravention of a Liverpool and Manchester Railway bylaw, which prohibited the use of wheels larger than five feet. There was no means of getting the Manchester from the Caledonian foundry to Liverpool Road Railway Station, so she was physically manhandled along the streets using pinch bars and much brute force. The operation taking from six o'clock at night until nine o'clock the following morning. She underwent running trials and was found capable of moving a load of 70 tonnes between Liverpool and Manchester in two hours. Sadly, the high centre of gravity and vertical cylinders meant she was unstable at speed and that she damaged the track. George Stevenson was asked to report on her and he was not impressed and the locomotive was not taken into stock. Instead, she was hired to the Haydock Colliery to work their coal trains. Sadly, in March 1833, she was involved in a fatal accident when running down the Sutton Incline. It had been raining and the rails were greasy. She had been running too fast and the tender brake was insufficient. Furthermore, she had no reverse gear, so the driver could not use back pressure braking. Manchester overturned and killed one of the train crew. The inquest, held before the Manchester coroner, found that her design was inherently dangerous, and the Liverpool and Manchester board reported to Galloway's that she be taken off the line. 
However, during the summer of 1834, she was hired to the engineer Richard Badnell for use on his experiments for his eccentric theory of undulating railways. Badnell believed the railway could be worked like a roller coaster. A train could be quickly run downhill and the momentum thus gained would help it to go up the other side. Suffice to say, his ideas were not universally adopted. Thereafter, Manchester disappears from the historical record. Galloway, Berman and Glasgow had a second attempt named the Caledonian. She was built in 1832. Some authors, and I'm looking at you, Mr. Dendy Marshall, have suggested Caledonian was nothing more than a rebuilt version of Manchester. But this is not the case, as the two existed side by side. Caledonian was far more conventional than her earlier sister. But again, despite the recommendation of George Stevenson, she still had vertical cylinders, this time mounted amidships. These cylinders worked a jackshaft, which in turn drove the driving wheels via outside coupling rods. Caledonian lasted in service on the Liverpool and Manchester for five years, before being sold in 1837. So that's a quick look at the first locomotive built in the great city of Manchester. The first of many, and the tiny acorn from which a mighty oak grew. Do you have a favourite Manchester locomotive or locomotive building firm? Comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. And keep the conversation going over on Facebook at On Historical Lines. You can also find out more about Manchester in my forthcoming book, Locomotives of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, coming next year from Pen and Sword Transport.